So I'm going to briefly cover how Rust will solve all of your problems, cure the world's ails, uh, and uh, possibly do all of that. Um, don't take my word for it. Um, so in the beginning, uh, Arm was uh, one of the founding members of the Rust Foundation. We weren't at the board at the time, we, but we recognized that Rust was this up-and-coming, newfangled thing. Uh, we had worked with Mozilla back in the day um, when they first started doing Rust. We had a quarter of an engineer kind of looking at it. It was a curiosity. It was this thing that, uh, yeah, it, 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 you know, we, we need people working on it. Um, I see the slides are a little bit backwards, but that's fine. Um, it was this thing that, yeah, it, it seems, it has promise. There's this memory safety thing. That sounds like a good idea. Let's, let's look at that. Um, so we recognized that we needed to build a team around this. Um, so we went from quarter of an engineer to quarter of an engineer and half an architect. Um, and that went on for a, a year, and then that half an architect became three quarters of an architect. We recognized applications in automotive, in robotics, in edge uh, use cases. Now, if anybody asks, what do I mean by edge? Yes. <laughs> it means whatever you wish it to mean. Uh, and so, you know, curiosity got more and more interesting, we started looking at, okay, other areas. Um, we looked at, okay, there was this thing at the time called, um, Linux Foundation came out with a, a Hyperledger project. Um, so we were like, okay, so this sounds like newfangled um, stuff. Can we marry that with Rust? Because let's do everything new together. Eh, no, maybe not. Um, and so we, we started looking at more and more um, areas of uh, actual um, involvement. Uh, and so a lot of our work was done on core architectural enablement, uh, ensuring that uh, the ARM architecture was well supported, both uh, well, primarily 64-bit, uh, as that's uh, our main focus, but also recognizing that in some of those edge slash automotive embedded use cases, 32-bit is still alive and, and well. Uh, so looking at, okay, how do we enable ensuring that all the latest architectural features coming out of ARM is supported in Rust in the same way that we're doing it with Go, with Java, um, et cetera. Uh, and so we started doing a lot of that core enablement work. Our team started to grow. Uh, we went from uh, you know three quarters of an architect to a whole architect and a whole engineer all of a sudden. Wow, great. <laughs> We've actually got a team. Um, and that team grew. We ended up having two full-time engineers working on Rust uh, and uh, ensuring that all the enablement was there. We then went on to going, okay, right, so things works. Right, you can run Rust. By this time, you know the foundation is out, uh, and you know the you could easily um, install Rust and and bring up Rust on you know ARM architecture, and it was no issues. So we started looking at what else do we do after core enablement performance. How do we ensure that Rust is a performant language on the ARM architecture? It's not going to run slow. It's going to leverage all the features, implement them correctly, efficiently, uh, and ensure that the core ARM benefit of that low power, high performance compute aspect uh, is still maintained. Uh, so we then went to about three engineers um, focused on Rust. Um, all of that was uh, all being done in the upstream. Great. Job done. We can go home. Marvelous. Uh, we then had partners going, yeah, it's great. So this Rust thing, we're really interested in it. We want to use it in 
core products, you know, things that actually brings in money not only to our partners, but also to us, because it means that they then buy more licenses from us to create more chips, etc. So, okay, yeah, let's see uh, where we go. Uh, and so one of the first um, big projects that ARM released uh, to the open source world is Trusted Firmware. Uh, Trusted Firmware is uh, a piece of firmware that runs on pretty much every single ARM device. Uh, so if you've got a phone, a tablet, uh, a car, a uh, computer, whatever it might be, um, you know, AWS instances running Graviton, um, you know, Google's Axiom, Microsoft's Cobalt, um, all of that, it's all running trusted firmware. Uh, and we had one of our partners go, do you know what, this core piece of technology that runs on pretty much every single ARM device, there's a few security holes there, uh, and they're pretty predominantly memory related. Could we do something to fix that? Uh, yes, you're the customer. What would you like to happen? <laughs> Customer's always right, after all. They're like, yeah, um, I think it should be rewritten. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it needs to be rewritten in Rust. Interesting, fair enough. Our team now grows to for full-time engineers. And in collaboration with some of our partners, um, there is now a rewritten implementation of trusted firmware called, wait for it, rusted firmware. <laughs> Innovative, you know, our marketing team spent millions of dollars, years thinking, okay, what the hell are we gonna call this thing? Rusted firmware. Um, one of our partners is now deploying rusted firmware in production. Um, if you get a high-end mobile device from a Android vendor, <laughs> I think I'm keeping it vague enough, um, then your device will be running uh, rusted firmware on there. Uh, and so, uh, you know, great, marvelous. It, it's working in the real world. You know, it's the real use case application with millions of end users not realizing that they're running anything Rust related. And that's a, a big win. Great. Uh, this same customer said, yeah, that's great. No, this works really well. We want you to rewrite some drivers. Okay. Uh, what would that be? You've got this GPU. Uh, it's called Mali. Can you rewrite that? Okay. So we wrote, rewrote. Um, uh, oh, that's the wrong Mali. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Um, GPU uh, drivers in Rust. Or we're in the process of finalizing the uh, the last of the GPU drivers and for Mali. And so. Uh, moving forward, if you're running uh, a device with the ARM Immortalis driver, which is our, our latest generation uh, Mali GPU driver, that driver will be written in Rust. Um, so it's, again, one of the reasons is primarily from a memory safety perspective, most of the GPU-related bugs uh, that come about are down to memory. Uh, and so by leveraging the benefits of Rust, we can actually minimize the number of bugs, uh, inherent bugs within the driver. It's not gonna cure all the bugs. It's not this magic one that goes, da-da, no more bugs. We wish, uh, it's not quite the same. Um, but, so that, that was that, uh, and so, on that whole theme of you know security and, and, and safety, um, we have been working with a large number of partners, customers, governments, um, who have all been saying that we need a better um, security story when it comes to uh, security libraries. Um, we would like to see a solid, memory-safe security library uh, running uh, across all these devices. Uh, ARM is, we run on 
99% of mobile devices. We have about 70 to 75% of digital uh, TVs. Um, we've got uh, probably 40% of the automotive space, and that's growing considerably. Um, and so they're like, yeah, you guys need to, to up your security game. Uh, and so this year, um, with the announcement of the Russell's project joining uh, Rust Innovation Lab, we've increased our investment within the Rust Foundation, um, and we're now a platinum member, um, primarily because of uh, the Russell's project, uh, and that's driving a lot of our investment within the community. Um, we uh, support Rust across the board. Um, we sponsor um, most of the Rust conferences, and my God, are there a lot of Rust conferences. Um, best one is RustConf, but that's beside the point. Um, the, uh, so we, we invest within the Rust community to ensure that the project has a safe, secure space to meet. Uh, you know, the, the community is by nature distributed, uh, and so we invest in ensuring that people can actually get together uh, in a safe space. Uh, and we are looking at investing in additional ways to ensure that the community uh, has the support needed. Uh, and I think Rust will be uh, going from strength uh, to strength. <laughs>